Hello gamers, Mage Hammer here for another edition of tonight on Mage Hammer's Game Table. This is actually technically the second episode in a new series here on the channel where I'm going to be doing a solo RPG campaign using the basic fantasy role-playing game 4th edition rules. The first was a session zero and in that particular episode I went over how my house rules are going to play in and uh, character creation and a little bit about the world in which this game is taking place in. So, um, I'm not going to go into those things here. I will introduce the characters though, just in case. Uh, I made Thardor on, on screen last episode, but the others I made beforehand. I just kind of wanted to give you all a idea of how character creation works with my house rules and everything. So here we are. Um, just one real quick thing. It's actually a pretty big change from Basic Fantasy 4th Edition is I added a proficiency bonus. So first to fourth level, all characters have a plus one bonus to saving throws and attack rolls and um, also uh, ability checks using the Basic Fantasy system. Uh, so if the math isn't adding up for you, or maths if you're across the pond, then that's that's why that extra plus one is there. Uh, I decided that's you know just you know you just go back and take a look at my video uh, for my house rules. I guess I don't want to rehash all that here. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm going to get right into the adventure and we're going to get started. So our adventurers are members of the Argosian Adventurers Guild, which is located in Argos and is a group that connects people who need those kind of adventuring services with the people who can provide them. And my player characters all have a history together. They met through various ways, and they decided that they were going to create an adventuring band, and they call themselves the Argosian Wayfarers. So... They have a, um, they have a contract, or what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a edict? No, that's not quite right. Anyway, they are legally a lot. They're registered with the guild, and they are you know legally recognized as an adventuring guild that can semi freely move about the swordlands, going on different missions uh, for their employers that come into the guild to employ them. Uh, the guild has certain benefits. One of those benefits is each of these characters is given a healing stone. Uh, healing stones have uh, three charges on them, and they are provided by the Kellanite Church. Kellan is the god of adventurers and travelers in my world. And they provide as a service to the guild, the members of the Argosian Adventurers Guild, these healing stones. So the healing stones each have a, a activation word, and all you need to do is touch the stone to the person you want to heal, including yourself. Uh, say the word, and you are healed 1d6 plus 1 hit points, which is basically a cure light wound spell in basic fantasy. And that can be done up to three times a day. Uh, they recharge 1d3 charges a night, um, depending. And that's that's random. And so I do this because I tend to prefer dungeon crawls. And sometimes, especially in a game, uh, an old school game like Basic Fantasy, hit point totals are not the highest and are hard to come by at times. So uh, I have the characters' hit points here. They're starting hit points. Lalandra is at 12, Thardor is 8, Dark Shadow is 6, and Ketho is 7. And... Hopefully those uh, healing stones will help keep them alive. Now, Thardor is a cleric, but I'm also of the school that believes that cleric shouldn't necessarily have to be the, you know, the only spell they cast is Cure Light Wounds. So another reason I've added in the healing stones. So A, it helps keep them alive a little longer, and B, it gives uh, Thardor some more um, utility. And uh, uh, based on my, he does have one, he has one first level Cleric spell. Uh, so, but he also gets plus one for wisdom. And that's two there. And, oh, plus two for wisdom, plus the one. And I'm using the additional spell option from uh, the Basic Fantasy website. So they've ended up basically with three slots. 
These are Ketho's spell slots, and these are Thardor's spell slots. Um, to the right of the card is Thardor's, to the bottom of the card is Ketho's spell slots. One thing I didn't talk about in my initial video was the uh, addition of DM Scotty's excellent system, Luck Dice. As I mentioned, I like to do a lot of dungeon crawls, and those can be quite deadly for old school characters. Um, and so I am adopting a version or a tweaked homebrew version of his Luck Dice, which he has Luck Dice be gained every time a character rolls a failed uh, attack or save. And they get a luck die. And then these luck dice can be used one of three ways. One, the luck dice can be used to add as many luck dice as you want that you own can be used to advance a roll, to improve a roll. So if you're rolling 11 and the DM says you missed, then you can roll two, D, two of your luck dice and add it to the roll, hopefully getting you to, you know, to hit, not knowing what the armor class of your target is, for example. Uh, they can also be used uh, to the same way on a saving throw. And then another way they can be used is to reduce damage. Uh, so what I've decided to do is, because this is old school and I want to keep it a little tough, but not too tough, uh, I've decided to adopt the luck dice, but especially because I'm playing solo. And as a DM, usually you award luck dice as the game goes on. I've just decided that I'm giving them a flat six dice each, except for Ketho, since he's a halfling, I gave him seven. You know, A, I'm biased towards halflings. I like halflings. And B, Traditionally, over the year, they've evolved to be a lucky class, so I gave him an extra luck die. So he has seven, the rest of them have six, and those dice can be used. But once they're used per session, they are no longer available. They're spent, and you can't get them for the rest of the session, where in DM Scotty's original design, you can get more. But I thought that'd make it a little tougher on the, uh, you know, but also keep them alive a little longer. Um, you know, so let me know what you think about the luck dice mechanic that I came up with there. I know it's... Uh, it's DM Scotty's baby, but uh, he's put it out there for the world to use, and I'm using it. I think it's pretty good, and uh, I've used it once already in one of my other face-to-face uh, -face games at home, and I think it worked beautifully. I used his original luck dice system. This is my tweaked one for solo play. So I guess now, <laughs> finally, with all that preamble out of the way, let's get to the adventure. So uh, the the party receives a summons to the guild hall that there is someone there that would like to uh hire them so they go to the uh argosian adventure hall in the city of argos and waiting there they are introduced to mirandal heathcroft she is modestly dressed uh long hair up in a bun and she is wearing spectacles and she has a tranestalian accent now tranestal is a country a kingdom to the right of the Swordlands uh, through the mountains. And I, in my, when I designed them, I designed Tranestall to basically be a, f a form of England. So she has a British accent. And she sits them down and says, I have a proposal for you. And the reason that I've decided on you is because of you, Thardor. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, Lalandra. You, Lalandra, I know you have roots tracing back to Tranestall, and I thought this might be a mission that you might be interested in. And uh, Lalandra does have a hint of a British accent, or English accent, or Tranestallian accent, and she uh, says, oh, do tell. So she goes, of course you've heard of the Shattered Crown of Tranestall, and because of her lineage, I'm going to say that Lalandra has. And uh, Thardor says, no, haven't heard of it. What is it? And Mirandal says, well, years, uh, many, many years ago, there was a king in Tranestall. And um, his name was Calibrand. And he was assassinated by a soldier named Grand the Petty. Then Grand the Petty, his hatred for Caliban was so great that once he got a hold of the crown, he smashed it with a hammer and shattered it into six pieces. He took that and Caliban's scepter of scepter of rule, scepter of might, which was his scepter of office. And he took it and hid it away in the Swordlands, away from the people of Tranestall, so that they could never, ever recover that crown and what it stood for to him. Uh, Grand the Petty had some kind of 
idea in his head that Calibrand was evil or something and needed to die and needed to get the crown and Tranestall. He's just very much down on Tranestall. He just did not like them. So um, he wanted to spite the entire kingdom and the royal family and hid him away here in the Swordlands. Well, apparently I have come into information that he actually drew a map. And that map has the locations of all six parts of the crown and the, and also the scepter of might. I can only assume that he wanted uh, he wanted to be able to find the pieces again someday if he ever needed them, leverage or something along those lines. But as far as we know, Gron the Petty has died and gone on into the mists of history. No one truly knows what happened to him. But now that it, the map has come into my possession, I would love to have that crown return to Tranestall where it really, truly belongs, have it put back together and become the symbol that it once was. Mm. Uh, Dark Shadow says, well, that's all well and good, but what are you going to pay? And she goes, oh, I'm prepared to pay well above guild standard. I'm willing to pay 500 Argosian gold to each of you if you return for each piece of the crown for it is truly valuable to me well that makes uh, Thardor's eyebrows raise <laughs> he's like I'm, I'm in <laughs> so um, and then Lalandra says well given that that's part of my lineage though I don't have a, the same connection to Tranestall that you do I would say I would be interested in doing that as well uh, and Miss uh, Ketho is like, uh, yep, in. And so she says, excellent. Uh, I have a copy of the map here. And she gives him a copy of the map. And you can decide where you would like to go. They are in various places throughout the Swordlands. And you can decide where you would like to go. Uh, one of them, you know, we're here in Argos. Probably the closest to Argos is up in, uh, down somewhere in the Bloodwood, south of Argos, if you'd like to go there. And so, um... With that, they sign a contract, uh, standard Argosian guild contract with the with the details of the deal, and they they are off. Um, they do have they do pull some resources from the guild hall to for adventuring, because they do pay dues to the the guild hall for the services that they get. So they pretty much have everything they need to adventure down outside of Argos. So they they go they they bid Mirandal Heathcroft good day. She returns to wherever she is that she came from, and she, they establish that they will meet back at the guild hall uh, once they uh, have received any parts of the crown. So, they decide amongst themselves that they're going to take each piece and bring it back separately and store it in the guild hall, and then once they've assembled all the pieces, they are going to meet back with her and tell her that they have them, if they get them. And if that map is true. But those are a few things that they need to figure out throughout the course of the campaign. Um, Mirandal does seem very confident in the fact that this map is the real deal. So, Okay, so they are they uh, spend the night preparing, getting ready, and they leave early morning. Leave uh, the uh, Argos's east gate and go across the Blood Bridge, and they make their way down into the Blood Wood. Now, that trip takes two and a half days. Uh, I'm going to roll for random encounters on the wilderness, on the wilderness tables. Um, so when they when they're on the road in the Blood Bridge, that is well patrolled. So the you know by the Argosian forces, so and militia and wardens and so forth. So there's no no uh, encounter there except for you know meeting merchants on the road or uh, pilgrims or you know the usual things you meet on the road heading towards a big uh, big city like uh, Argos but however once they hit the bloodwood i'm going to roll for two encounters and see if they encounter anything so on a 1 in 6 they encounter something oh so they have an encounter we'll say that's on the first date let's see what it is all right so it's going to be 11. And that is that. Excellent. So they are 
just entering into the woods when they hear a uh, they hear a moaning, like a very deep moaning, and coming through the woods towards them is a rather large uh, creature. They can't quite see it through the trees yet, but um, as they are making their way into the into a clearing out the other side comes an ogre holding his face and a huge club and he goes oh human as he says he sees Loranja you hurt me and she goes what it wasn't me what are you talking about Prepare to die. And he starts moving towards them. We're going to roll initiative. Now, initiative and basic fantasy is a um, D6. Uh, I do individual initiative as per the, the main rules. That I haven't changed. And everybody adds or subtracts their dex modifier. So, uh, we're going to roll, uh, roll uh, Thardor. I'm going to use their luck dice to indicate their initiative. And then I'm also going to roll die for the bad guys for the ogre so the ogre gets um a five let's see i think he has a dex bonus but you never know not really a, there are no dex bonus dex okay just checking see if they had some kind of initiative they don't so he's got a five um dark shadow has a seven so dark shadow is going to go first then um ketho has a five since Ketho has a bonus, I'll have him go before the ogre. Uh, Thardor has a minus one, so he's actually at a three. And Lalandra rolled a five, and she does not have any other bonus. So I'm going to put her before the ogre as well, since she is a hero. So Dark Shadow pulls back her bow, and let's fly an arrow at this grumpy ogre so she is going to she has a plus three with this 18 that is definitely hit and she hits for one point of damage so i'm going to track the hit points of the creatures on my handy dandy lcd notebook i mean if you haven't seen this before in some of my other videos you draw on it push the button it goes away it saves a lot of paper a lot of note cards so, uh, let's check out the hit points of the ogre. Our hit dice is four plus, four plus one. So, let me roll real quick off camera exactly how many hit points he's going to have. And that's not a ton. He must be wounded. Yeah, that's not much at all. All right, so she hits him with an arrow. It just kind of glances off his shoulder. All right, so that's her turn. Then, um, next is Ketho Misty Hollow. He's going to use a... Arcane Bolt, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, yeah, just within range, and he has to make a ability check, uh, 17, he gets to add his intelligence to that, 16, um, and his proficiency bonus, so he needs a 15 or higher to hit with his Arcane Bolt, he does not get it, he's not going to use a luck die on this particular thing, the Arcane Bolt flies past the ogre and does no harm. Lalandra, um, she moves forward. She, she, first of all, she doesn't like ogres very much. Second of all, she doesn't care. <laughs> ogres must die in her book. So she's going in. She moves in for attack. She's attacking with her longsword. She has a plus four to hit with this. And she rolls a six. So she misses. Swing and a miss. But she's up there on that massive ogre. Look out for that club. Thardor is going to move up but is not gonna I don't think is gonna be able to um no I guess he is able to get up and attack so he does he swings his warhammer at plus three and hits 15 that is enough to hit the ogre who has an armor class of uh, 15 so he hits and he does a 1d uh 1d8 plus one damage and he does five damage to the ogre. Urgh. Ogre reels from that blow. And now 
Oh, crap. I did Thard over for him. Well, we'll get the hit off. We'll get his attack off. I wasn't following my own initiative. So he's going to swing at Lelander since he was the only one there when that happened. <clears throat> and he hits armor class 16. And Lelandra has an armor class of 17. So she catches that blow in her shield. She feels it through her arm. But, man, uh, if, that, if that blow does land, she knows that she's going to be taking some damage. Uh, so Thardor then attacked, and we took care of that. And now we roll initiative again. Uh, initiative every round. So Dark Shadow is going on a six. Thardor is... He's got a minus one, so he's down to three. Ketho is up to four. The Ogre, hmm, two is going to go last. Lalandra, that almost doesn't really matter. She doesn't have a dex modifier, so there we go. So uh, Dark, Ra Dark Shadow, let's fly another arrow. And hits armor class... 13, not enough. Flies by. Not going to use a luck die on that. Don't need it. Then um, next up is Ketho. So Ketho is going to try that Arcane Bolt again and misses and fails to cast, however you want to look at it. And then next up is Thardor. He swings that mighty Warhammer of his and misses. He only has a, he has a plus three with that. So that puts him at 12. Whew, swing and a miss. Landra, uh, she does not like this ogre at all. She lets loose with her longsword at plus four and hits. So uh, that's a 21 to hit, and she does D8 plus two damage with that longsword. Oh, three damage, of course. So just a glancing blow. The ogre moved just in time, and it was just enough to hit a meaty part of his body to give him a bruise, but to do so little. He is very fascinated with Landra. She's the one that's hitting her the most, so he is going to swing at her and he misses so let's move on to initiative all right so that puts us at woo thardor is enraged by this ogre Keth, uh, ketho is second uh that puts oh she uh, dark shadow moves ahead of the ogre barely and lalandra goes last so thardor swings with his warhammer oh <sighs> And hits armor class 14, just shy of hitting him. Um, he could use a luck die, but he's going to save it. It's a little too early in the battle, and this battle is not going, it's going pretty well, so he's going to hold off. Next is Ketho. Once again, we're going to try that arcane bolt and misses. And then Dark Shadow, short bow. Short bow. Oh, it was almost a crit, but just misses. Or not just missed, missed completely. Could have been a, a good one. Lalandra is getting swung at by the ogre, the angry ogre. Oh, this time he hits. Oof, one shy of a crit. A crit in this game. <clears throat> a crit in my house rules are max damage plus a d4. So the, the, just barely a crit, but that 2d6 damage coming her way. Um. Ooh, 11 damage. Oh, man. She, he really connected with her. She's down. Oh, man, that hurt. Oh, that was massive. All right, so... Ah, she reels under the blow. And then she swings back. Fury driving driving her rage. And she hits, she hits armor class 16, does 5, 6, 7 damage, which drops the ogre. And he is defeated. That was a massive blow. That was awesome. All right. So the ogre with the sore face has now been defeated. Put out of his misery, if you will. All right. So I'm going to record the experience points as we go. Okay. So moving on. They continue their way into the Bloodwood following the map given to them by Heathcroft. However, Lalandra is pretty messed up, so she is going to use uh, she's going to use two charges on her healing stone, which is going to put her at two left. Uh, so she gets a total of all of her hit points back, but she only has one charge left this day on her healing stone. So. I will keep track of those with these. So she's down to one healing stone. Everybody else is still at three. Or charges, I guess, is the word, not stones. 
and we'll see how that plays out. All right, so they continue on their way, and they reach they find they reach the uh, place on the map indicated by the map, and it is a cave mouth. But um, we're going to do a check. And it's, yeah, so it's a cave mouth as far as they know. And so now um, Dark Shadow and Thardor have dark vision. However, Ketho and Lalandra do not. So Ketho casts light, which is an inherent ability in my game, on uh, his dagger. And they go forth into the uh, cave. Um I'm going to see for the heck of it if there's something in this cave. And there is not. It was going to, on a one, there was going to be some. There isn't. But they make their way, they explore the cave, they look around, and they find a, uh, a concealed door. It's concealed by a, uh, a fur that blends in with the stone. It's like a gray fur and blends in with the stone. They found it. Uh, actually, Dark Shadow found it. And... Uh, beyond it is a stairway leading down into the darkness. So, move it over here a little bit. All right. By the way, I'm playing on a grip mat. I found the grip map on um, Etsy, and basically, things don't slide on it, uh, or they do. They if they slide on it, I have. I'm using matte sleeves, so they slide by design. But you you put it there, you tap it down, and pretty much it'll stay in place. Uh, you know, especially like this this note card doesn't move. This has matte backing, so but it's still it's still better than keeping it on a traditional uh, uh, play mat because those are way slidey. Okay, anyway, so just that little side out of the way. They uh, enter in. They go down the stairs. And they find a rubble-filled room. Um, the map that they have only does the locations and does not do inside the actual delves where these things are being kept. So, um, they are going to have to explore to find the actual crown. So, here we go. So, they enter into the... They go down the stairs and they decide... They decide they're going to roll, they're going to randomly see which direction they go, and they're going to go to the right. So, to the right is a double door. So, Dark Shadow's like, ah, doors, I love doors. And so, she goes up to the door, and she is going to um, check it for traps. So, uh, Basic Fantasy uses percentage dice. She has a 20% chance to find this, uh, and, oh, 21. So she came close, uh, but she does not find any traps. And then she listens, and she hears something on the other side. Let's see what she hears. Or doesn't hear, for that matter. I guess it's possible she didn't hear something. Uh, okay. Where is that? Okay, she hears like a slight, like a barking noise. She's not sure whether it's a language or what. She goes, there's someone on the other side of this door. And so the lander's like, okay, well, we don't know what's on the other side of the door. We're going to have to risk it. We need to find the piece of the shattered crown. So she opens, uh, she opens the double door and peeks in, Lalandra does. And across the way are... Um, a group of kobolds. Um, so let me check the number appearing in this, in the book. Let's see if that's going to be a problem. I may adjust it accordingly. So well, I don't really have number appearing. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of take it as I go. Um, so I'm going to say that there are five kobolds. I think that's. Now let's go six. I'm gonna. I'm going to attempt fate. I'm going to do six kobolds. Uh, let me get their stats going here. Um, 
that's the other great thing about Basic Fantasy is the monsters, the DM section, and the player's handbook are all in one book. So this is a whole game right here. Uh, there's obviously a bunch of other information on the website and different varieties that you can use, but ultimately it's, uh, it's, a, great, it's a great system. Okay, so anyway, um, six kobolds on the other side of the door. And uh, some of them have, well, they, she looks, say they have weapons. So some of them have bows, some of them have uh, other kind of weapons. Um, you know what? For the heck of it, I'm going to see if there's a one in six chance that they are accompanied by a shaman. They are not. So just a kobold party hanging out, doing their thing. And they are across the way over here. So I'm going to have that be a, the party's going to enter up here. These two first and the other two. And then I'm going to have these, this is this, they fall off if they go that direction. Um, so I've been, I'm backing up one. I know it's going to be a little off camera, but I'll be okay. I want a little extra space here. So they, this is the way, if they fall off either side, they can fall down into the pit, and then the kobolds are here waiting for them on this side. They're actually currently engaged with the treasure, so I'm going to say that it's possible that our party surprises them. Um, so the kobolds, and the roll for the kobolds. They roll a one. They are surprised. They are not. Their sharp ears caught the opening of the door as the party enters, and now we're going to roll initiative. They turn to look and start barking in their koboldish language. All right, so initiative. Uh, cool, kobolds, woo. Ketho goes first. Kobold second. Dark Shadow actually is tied with Ketho. So Dark Shadow is going to go before Ketho because she has a higher dexterity. Uh, then it's Lalandra and then Thardor. Okay. So Dark Shadow lets fly with her uh, short bow. She sees that one of them has a light crossbow, so she shoots at that one because it looks like it's loaded. So she fires off her bow. It's a crit, so that automatically takes that kobold out because I'm telling you right now, that short bow does... It's a six plus a D4 extra damage, like, you know, an extra one day. Yeah, it's done. Takes the kobold out. Uh, kobolds have, uh, they only have one D4 hit points. I'm going to give them four hit points. So that erased that one. That arrow just, boom, knocked it. Boom, up against the wall. That kobold drops. All right, next up is uh, Ketho. Ketho's going to unleash an arcane bolt at this uh, other one that has a bow. And he actually gets that bolt off, and it hits that. Um, Archer for a D3 damage. And it is two damage, so we have ourselves a wounded kobold. Alright. Alright, so um, then next up is the uh, kobolds themselves. So the bowman lets fire. He, he's having a hard time targeting the halfling, but he shoots at Dark Shadow because Dark Shadow's across the way with his short bow and misses. And then um, they go to the front here and get ready to receive the charge. And they, they yeah, so they move up, but they don't move up to attack. They're waiting for them to come across the the bridge. And so Lalandra is going to oblige them. So she moves up and she swings at the guy in the armor. I'm going to say he has a little better armor class than normal. Uh, he is at a 15 armor class. So she needs an 11 or higher to hit. So she misses. Um, then Thardor is going to move up. And he's going to attack the one with the spear. So. And he misses. So not an aud audacious beginning to that combat round. So now we're back to initiative. All right, so Dark Shadow coming in clutch. Thardor is doomed to be last, and it looks like... Yeah, so Dark Shadow, let's fly with a short bow at the guy with the bow. She's going to take him down, hopefully. 
and misses. And then um, Ketho is going to hit the art or hit the archer because I that's who he targeted before, right? Sure, going to hit the archer with an arcane bolt, maybe. And misses with a natural one. <laughs> so okay, that arcane bolt. He just didn't even cast it. it, it his spell casting it just wasn't good enough. So um, now that brings us to the kobolds. So I should have put the spear kobold. He got too excited when up front. He actually could have reached um, the dwarf with that. But instead, they're going to get two attack, one attack on the landra, and uh, that'll be the gray die. And then this uh, smoky, this dark die will be uh, an attack on Thardor. So Lalandra is uh, missed, and so is Thardor. Can't get through their armor. And the short bow shoots at uh, the archer on the other side and misses Dark Shadow. Okay. And these two, um, I guess they're small enough they probably could have... Eh, no. They're going to actually... Nope, they're just going to wait. They're just going to be the second rank. All right, so now... Uh, Next up is Lelandra. She's going to take a swing at uh, that kobold that she's up against. And we'll see what happens. And she hits, and she does maximum damage, and just slaughters that uh, kobold, and then moves up a space, getting ready for another attack. Uh, Thardor is next. He attacks the spear wielder, and misses. And that brings us to initiative. So here we go. All right, so, ooh, Lelandra. <clears throat> so this becomes a six, so Ketho is going ahead. She's gets, she's with a seven, so she's definitely going ahead. They are last, and he's got a four, so. All right, Dark Shadow, let's fly a short bow at the archer. Got to take this guy down. And, oh, he has a 14 armor class. No, wait, 13 armor class, and she hits... She just hits a 13. So, hits and does that much damage. The archer is out of commission. There are three kobolds remaining. And now, um, that was Dark Shadow's attack. Now we have Ketho fire off a um, arcane bolt at this guy here, back right. See if it lands yes so he hits that guy with an arcane bolt and does two damage to that guy so he is wounded from magical powers lalandra swings at the uh, blade wielder in front of her and hits and does uh, six damage taking that kobold out drops him drops him over the edge into the into the pit and then stays put and then um, Thardor unleashes on the Spear Wielder and hits armor class 12. Just missing. Whew. Just missing. He dodged out of the way at the last second. Now they attack. The one with the knife is going to attack um, Lalandra. That's the gray die. And then the dark die is going to attack Thardor. Ooh. Uh, they don't believe they have any plus to hit, but so he misses Lalandra, but barely scrapes off her uh, armor, and then uh, Thardor is of course missed, which brings us to initiative. These kobolds, they don't know what else to do. They have nowhere to run, so they're trapped. So they're gonna fight to the death. So Dark Shadow gets a six. Thardor is at a three. I'm gonna say the kobolds are a little more nimble than he is, so they're gonna go before him. Ketho's last. Actually, he gets a three, so I'll put him last anyway. And then, there we go, so the Landra. So Dark Shadow, let's fly an arrow at the Knife Wielder. And she hits and takes him off the board. And then um, Lalandra swings at the Spear Wielder. Oh, my goodness. Completely misses. And then that one attacks uh, Thardor, because it's just it's only got eyes for Thardor, and misses. And then um, Thardor swings. Could this be the end of these kobolds? They don't know who they were messing with. And he does, and finishes them. So the kobolds are defeated. And so there is a altar, a bloody altar, and some 
Clay pots. Uh, they investigate the clay pots. They find nothing in it. The altar. They investigate the altar. I'm going to have Dark Shadow take a look at it. Um, I'm going to use her secret door ability that uh, they have to see if there's any kind of secret compartment. And I don't really know if there is. But so what I'm going to do is if she is successful, there's going to be a secret compartment. So she is successful on finding secret doors on a five and six, I believe. I do a high roll on D6s. Nope, she does not find one. So I'll say there isn't one. Uh, we'll see what kind of treasure the kobolds have. Kobolds have treasure type um, P and Q each, which I think is several coins. Um, I thought I had my treasure page printed out. I might have it printed out. Okay, here we are. Just look at the rule book. P and Q. Basically, it's going to be coins. Um, so this is what I'll do. It's going to do... Uh, looking at 10, 16, 17, 18, 21 um, gold or silver. 21 silver pieces. And we'll record that. And we'll go forward. Uh, as as part of the uh, adventure guild, they get to main, they get to keep whatever they uh, they find in adventures. By the way, that's why they still have to pay it. You know, they still have to pay a fee. All right. So without anywhere else to go here, they make their way back across the bridge, out through the double doors, and down the other hallway, which curves to the right. But just as they are making their way there, some creatures come around the corner. So first of all, let's check for surprise. Our crew. Um, because they have an elf with them, are surprised on a one, the uh, monster, whatever this is, when I roll, it'll be surprised on it. Yeah, so the monster is surprised. They are stunned to see us come around the corner. And let's see what uh, what this creature is. It's a band of orcs. Uh, I'm going to say that it is um, five orcs. And... Uh, Orcs are one hit die creature. So let's go to their entry. Armor class 14, one hit dice. Um, because of the nature of my my the power the powerfulness that my house rules give them, I'm giving them maximum hit points each. So five orcs. At eight hit points each. Um, I'm going to see if they have a shaman with them. A one out of every eight orcs will be a two hit die leader. And an alair, in addition, a lair has a chance of a shaman. So I'll say the shaman is not with them. It's just straight up orcs, and they are all there. The battle is in a hallway, and the hallway curves off to the side. Yeah, okay. So, let's do this, yeah. All right, so these guys are up here. Just a little bit off camera, it's fine. It'll work. All right. All right, and the, it curves this way. So I'm gonna take them off camera so I can get the orcs coming around the corner. Well, almost off camera, yeah. So they're there, trust me. <laughs> All right, so then the orcs come around the corner. There are five of them. So here we go. Let's go, as the kids say. I'm gonna give one a bow. So they're just coming around the corner. These guys are leading. Uh, we're gonna say they're, yeah, yeah, we'll say they're, they're further than 20 feet. So like I said, uh, my miniatures are off camera, but that's okay. They're in the hallway. I'm gonna put them at their encounter distance. And then the, uh, the orcs are here, ready to do battle. All right, so um, it's initiative since no one was surprised. Or the orcs are surprised, so our party gets off an attack. Uh, Dark Shadow's going to let fly an arrow. 
Um, they are armor class 14, I believe I said. 15. Armor class 15. Her bow flies, smacks against the wall, and shat or the arrow shatters against the wall. Ketho lets loose a arcane bolt at one of the lead orcs, misses. And then Lalandra, uh, she could charge. So that'll give her plus two to hit, but they'll have plus two to hit her on the next attack. But she's going to do that. So she gets plus six to attack this first orc, trying to do a shock and awe. And she crits it. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, eight plus two is ten plus additional d4. So, like, that's a lot of damage. That's 12 damage. She slaughters that orc. But they have plus two to hit her. And then uh, he charges as well. And he gets plus two to hit the other orc. And with his Warhammer, and he misses. That's plus six, that's, uh, he gets plus two, plus his, plus five, nine, he misses. And he's not gonna use a luck die for that. All right, so that was all of their attacks. Now we roll initiative, because the surprise round is over. So, um, let's see what happens now. All right. Ooh, Dark Shadow has a, He's got a four orcs, and then um, Ketho. I don't think Ketho wants to use his sleep spell quite yet, but he is going to move up a bit. He's going to move, and then uh, I think he might actually use a magic missile and shoot it at this formidable-looking orc back there. It's a D6 uh, plus one magic missile. He does four damage to that orc. All right. So that was a slot. And then the orcs attack. So this one moves up to this corner and is able to attack. He moves up and is able to attack. And the archer moves down here and lets fly. Since there's a spellcaster here, he's going to shoot at the spellcaster. So he lets fly an arrow at Ketho. Now, Ketho is pretty vulnerable right now. So we'll see. Short bow. Ooh, missed. Whew. Skittered off the wall and missed him. All right. So uh, that was the bowman, the archer. Now, uh, two attacks on the Landra. Uh, they get plus one to these rolls. One hit die creature. Ooh, one of them, one of them landed a blow. Uh, I believe... I think it's by damage. Um, they're gonna have they're gonna have one d eight weapon damages. So, um, it does three damage to her. So she takes three damage. She's at nine. All right. Yeah, these little uh, dry erase playing cards I got off of Amazon have been uh, a great gaming aid. I use I use them a lot. Okay, so she was hit by that guy, missed by the other guy, and then Thardor is attacked by the orc in front of him. Oh, and he is hit, and he takes two damage. So he's at six damage. <clears throat> All right. Which brings us to Thardor himself. He swings at the guy that attacked him with his Warhammer. And he hits, and he does uh, eight damage, I believe. He does eight damage total, and that fells the orc fighting him. So he has been defeated. He takes a five-foot step towards that archer. Um, <clears throat> that's his move. And he's not breaking combat, so we're good. That's him. Next is Lorandra. She attacks the guy with the mace, or the morning star, whatever you want to call it, with her longsword. And, oh, she hits and does uh, seven damage. I believe she has a plus two to damage. Yes, seven damage, which wounds him, but does not take him down. Um, next up is um, Dark Shadow. Uh, she takes a shot at the archer, hoping to bring him down. And she does. Uh, well, doesn't bring him down. Wait. Nope, doesn't bring him down. Wait, was that the archer? Did I wound the archer? Let's say I didn't wound the archer. So it does uh, seven damage, so he's wounded as well. I'll make a note going forward. All right. 
He is down to that many hit points. All right, so three remaining. Uh, we go to initiative. Oof. Ketho's last. Dark Shadow moves this still towards the bottom. Ooh, Lalandra. He, uh, Thardor has a minus one to his initiative, so he goes la next to last. So Lalandra swings at the guy she injured, hoping to take him down. Oof, she misses. Um, then he attacks her. <clears throat> they both attack her, actually. Oh, one, another one hits her. Uh, does uh, D8 damage, two damage. So she's down to seven. All right, seven damage. And then uh, Bowman fires at the halfling. And uh, misses. Oh, that'd be a D6 anyway. But yeah, misses. I think. No. Hold on. Plus one. Ten. Yeah, just missed, actually. Whew. I'll split his hairs. All right. Dark Shadow fires at the archer. Twang. Missed. And Thardor swings at the archer. And hits armor class 15 and hits and takes the archer down. No more archer. Okay, and then Ketho fires off a arcane bolt at the one with the mace here and hoping to take him down and does take him down with a D3 because he only has one hit point. Does one hit point, that's enough to take him down. Just the guy with the axe left. All right. Uh, so, initiative. Dark Shadow wins initiative. Uh, Thardor is next, then uh, Lalandra is last, and Ketho is next to last. And so, uh, Dark Shadow can't really see him with the bow, so she's going to move over here so she can get a look at him. But he's around the corner, so she's going to fire off, and I'm going to give him a plus four to his armor class. So he is at armor class 19. Oof, she missed completely, smacked into the wall. That's to be expected. Thardor moves up, attacks, swings at Warhammer, misses. And then um, the orc attacks Thardor because he's right in his face. And hits Thardor and does three damage. And that brings us to... Ketho, he lets fire a, another arcane bolt and misses. And Alandra swings. Oh, it's going to hit. And then I hit that thing and missed. All right. So, initiative. This orc is fighting to the end. All right. So, Dark Shadow is going to move up to get a better angle and this time he only has a plus two to his armor class so she needs a 17 to hit and five plus uh three is 18 so she hits and takes him down for he is takes him down all right so we'll see what kind of treasure they have they look down the hall uh and let's see what's on the other side there On the other side of the hall. Always fun to see what's awaiting someone. All right. A room. Or a, a hallway to the right. Not a room. They can't see the room yet. Okay, so they take the time to loot the orcs. The orcs have Q&R. So we'll go look at Q&R real quick. See what that treasure is. Um, Q&R. Mm. Uh, 3d6 and 2d6. Oh, they don't have much at all. Three, four, four silver, and uh, three electrum. Four silver, three electrum. Uh, 
All right. So, um, Thor, Thor, uh, Thardor uses a uh, he, uh, one of the charges on his healing stone, holds it to himself, and says the healing word, and he is healed. Six hit points. That brings him back to full. To eight hit points. Lalandra is going to use her final um, she's going to use her final charge on hers and gets uh, three more so she's up to 10 out of her 12 so a little better but she is out of healing the rest of them may be able to heal her if she needs it all right so they go around the corner they march on, they go around the corner, and they come to a door. So Dark Shadow does her thing and um, goes for a find-remove trap. Oh, she's going to listen first this time. She's 44, doesn't hear anything, and doesn't find any traps. Goes to the next door, listens, and hears something on the other side. Let's see what she hears, maybe. All right, more of barking noise. So, um, she goes, I hear something on the other side. So they, uh, they want to try to surprise the kobolds. Uh, and hopefully this will be the place where they find their crown, but uh, metagame, since I don't like my videos to go too much beyond an hour, and this is a closed off area, the shard of the uh, crown is going to be in the possession of these kobolds, maybe. Maybe there'll be some other twist, whatever, we'll see. Uh, I'm going to say that there are six kobolds and a shaman, and the shaman is there, uh, yeah, so we'll say the shaman is there investigating the shard, trying to see if it's magical. All right, so this is a... What are we looking at? Uh, 25 foot room. All right. 10, 25. And the party will enter through the door here. This will be the door. Uh, so they're going to try to burst in because they know it's kobolds because they heard barking they're not sure of the situation but these kobolds are hanging around um, when they they burst in and they see the shamans let me double check and see I, the party's not going to be surprised we'll see if the kobolds really are surprised and they are they are surprised so um, they burst in Lalandra just moves across the room there's some pillars there I will indicate those pillars uh, with these 20 sideds. Uh, she skirts around the pillar. And then, did I do this room right? 10, 25, yeah. So, yeah, it's fine. I'm looking at it in reverse. Uh, yeah, okay. So there's 10 feet between this one. Yeah, okay, cool. I get it now. Um, so there's a pillar there. And there's a pillar here. All right, so she skirts around a pillar and attacks this uh, kobold here. They have four hit points each. There are three, six of them, plus the shaman. All right, here we go. Um, she attacks. Dun, 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 dun. All right. And she hits and slaughters it. Uh, that was her move, and she's there. No charge, just attacking. Oh, I forgot to add the armor class bonus to the charge last time. All right, anyway, next up is Thardor. He goes after the spear wielder, and he attacks. Oh, I moved my... Move my, why did I move my columns? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get something to be columns for next game. Uh, missed. 
All right. Uh, Dark Shadow comes in, sees a shaman, kind of edges up against that thing and lets fly at the, sh at the shaman. Can't let those shamans get those spells off. So she lets fly and misses. And then um, Ketho comes in and unleashes a sleep spell. All right, so he's going to use a spell slot, and he's going to cast sleep. Moved up and unleashed. Sleep. Pretty sure sleep works the way that it always has. Put several creatures, three or fewer hit dice, or a single four hit die creature into a magical slumber. Creatures with five more hit dice are not affected. The creature. Save versus spells to resist. So these creatures, uh, they're going to need like, I think they're going to need like an 18 or so. Like, yeah, saving throws for um, monsters aren't great. It's page 60. Yeah. I think they use, yeah, okay, there they are. So they need an 18. All right, so if they fail this save, they need an 18. I'm going to give the, uh, I'm going to make the shaman be a 16 because he, he's a magic user. So I'm going to do that on the fly there. All right. Um, they each get a save. Uh, otherwise, they fall asleep. I guess that's also going to include... Well, if she puts it right on the Shaman, 5, 10, 15, 20... Yeah, it's going to include those two members of her party. So let's get the kobolds out of the way first. All right, so uh, one, two... These two here, do they save? No, they fall asleep. These two here, do they save? One does, one does not. So we'll have Crossbow Boy save. This guy here, he does not save. And the Shaman has to be, is on a 16 and save. So the Shaman is still up, Crossbow is still up. And this one is not. Okay. Now, does Lalandra save? Uh, her sleep... Her spells is 16. So let's see how she does. <laughs> she rolled a natural one. She falls asleep. And Kath was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Thardor has a, uh, a pretty good save. He needs a 10. He gets it. So he saves and he's still awake. Okay. Uh, that being said, I believe we roll initiative now. So we'll see how this plays out. Oh, well, Kobold's got it pretty good. Kobolds are going first. That's not going to be great. Oh, no, wait. Dark Shadow goes ahead. Um, and then... He have a plus one this Ketho... Ketho does have a plus one, so I'll put him ahead of them as well. He's about E. Well, no, they'll go simultaneous. I forgot about simultaneous initiative. Holy moly. Yeah, so simultaneous initiative here. So they're all going simultaneous initiative because they all got a result of five, and then that's that's the where we go. All right, so Dark Shadow, let's fly another arrow at the Shaman and crits him. <laughs> Boom! Up against the wall, the arrow like almost pins him to the stone, and he drops something to the floor, and it has a metallic sound um and then she moves up behind this pillar here next up is ketho uh he moves here and unleashes an arcane bolt at this crossbow wielder and he misses uh but simultaneously he's gonna fire off a uh crossbow at the magic user at the halfling and that's simultaneous even if he had been hit uh, Light Crossbow does D8 in my game, and he misses. Plang. It's going to take him around to do that, so he just pulls out his javelin and gets ready to fight. And then Carthor, Thardor moves up and attacks because he's going to protect his halfling and misses. Great. Lalandra is sleeping. I should have 
Yeah, okay, good. Uh, initiative. Uh, she's sleeping, so he's going at 7. She's going at 7, so they'll go at the same time. Kobold's going at 4, Thardor is at 1. All right, so Ketho goes over and wakes up Lalandra because he feels bad. Uh, and we'll put her at the very last of the initiative. And then uh, Dark Shadow pops out, fires off an arrow, and then it'll jump back. 10, 13. I think Kobold's had a 13 uh, armor class. So hopefully that hits. Yep, so that arrow hits and does two damage. Not enough to take down the uh, crossbow guy. But she jumps back behind the pillar. And then, um, yeah. Then the kobold attacks Thardor because he's right in his face. And actually, he's going to try to run away. So he's going to try to run away, and uh, Thardor gets a free hit at him. But Thardor chooses... Now he's going to take the hit. And he misses, and the the kobold runs out of the room and escapes. He retreats. So Lalandra wakes up, and Thardor moves over to where the kobold was. Uh, they have... Hmm, they have 11 silver amongst themselves. But he also finds uh, the shard, and it matches the description that uh, Miranda Hall that Heathcroft gave to them about the shard. And when he touches it, he feels a tingle. He can feel that there's magic there. And uh, even he, he starts to detect magic, in fact, and, and uh, brings Kathor's uh, power to him and knows that it is magical. So he puts it in his, his, uh, in his back, in his pe backpack. He says, I think we've found what we needed. They make their way out of the dungeon and they make their way back i'm gonna see if they have an encounter in the bloodwood and they do not they make their way back to the adventures guild to rest up and heal and uh they're gonna go they're gonna keep it in safekeeping in the safes of the adventures guild and then uh, they're gonna take a day to rest and head back out into the next mission well gamers that is uh my first session of basic fantasy fourth edition let me know what you think how it went do you think the uh house rules are working uh you think you know how things are working is it working well whatever give me some input if you like if not you know just sit back and enjoy the story and we'll see where this goes didn't have to use any luck dice so that's something um and i'm gonna take a look at everything that i did and make some decisions for next time but i think i think everything went pretty well i'm, I'm very happy with how it worked well until next time gamers keep on rolling dice and playing games thanks for watching mage hammer out